हेलो एवरीवन, आई एम प्रतिभा एंड वेलकम टू माय चैनल नर्चरिंग इंटेलेक्ट एज यू आर अवेयर दैट ईच ईयर ऑन ट्वेंटी फेब्रुवरी नेशनल साइंस डे इज सेलिब्रेटेड इन इंडिया टू को मेमोरेट the discovery of the raman effect by indian physicist sir c v raman on 28th february 1928 for his discovery sir c v raman was awarded the nobel prize in physics in 1930 about raman effect in few words then sir c v raman in 1921 was on board a ship and on his way home to london a question struck him why is the sea really blue he wasn't convinced with the notion that it's blue because of the sky's color so in march 1928 he published his theory that came to be known as raman scattering raman scattering is change in wavelength of light that occur when a light beam is deflected by molecules and this is called raman effect let us understand it in a simple way you see an apple on a bright sunny day it's red in color right but why well the sunlight is made up of seven colors and each color has a particular wavelength you can see different colors of sunlight when it passes through a prism that's when light bends and separates or splits into different colors similarly the red apple is made up of certain molecules that interact with the sunlight most of the apple's molecule absorb all of the colors except red which is reflected and hence you see a red apple Similarly every object around you is made up of different molecules and reflect different wavelengths of light and therefore you have different colored objects Though the Raman effect is not used to study colors it was extensively used in the field of spectroscopy to find structural fingerprint of different molecules it explains molecules having varying shapes and sizes for this sir c v raman was awarded nobel prize in 1930 becoming the first asian to receive nobel prize in physics so to celebrate this discovery of raman effect national science day is celebrated on the 28th of february of every year The preceding week of Science Day was observed as Science Awareness Week. A part of the central government's Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav to commemorate 75 years of independence, the event is funded by the Department of Science and Technology under the STUTI. that is synergistic training program utilizing the scientific and technological infrastructure scheme in that indian institute of technology gandhi nagar has organized a week long science awareness program for more than 800 students of classes 11th and 12th from ahmedabad and gandhi nagar regions from our kendra vidyalay number 3 gandhi nagar kant 50 students accompanied by two teachers visited iit gandhi nagar on 22nd february where the event was aimed to popularize stem learning stem means science technology engineering and mathematical learning among school students with hands on activities and inspiring them to pursue careers in various fields of science students saw various scientific demonstrations such as fire without matchstick production of oxygen non newtonic fluids using corn flour 
the explosion of ping pong balls using liquid nitrogen, demonstration of earthquake building models, characteristic of dry ice, invisible glass, elephant's toothpaste, and oxidal, oxidation reduction among others. Students also visited the IIT Gandhinagar laboratories and the sports complex. Students were encouraged and motivated by me to understand their favorite activities thoroughly and share their visit experience with other students of our Vidyalaya. As per motivation and guidance by me, few of them had demonstrated their inspired activity, which I am sharing here in follow-up. So keep watching till the end. Goma from class 11 science and I'm here for explaining an experiment which I've seen in the recent visit of IIT Kankhinagar. I will be explaining in both Hindi as well as in English so that you can understand in both ways. Earthquake, right? Earthquake causes a lot of casualties and damages building in a very large amount. We all know that, right? No frequency which building get more affected or a taller one or a shorter ones. It have a very simple explanation behind it. Let me explain you. So here we can see that Two buildings hai. first one is taller and second one is shorter, right? So when we start increasing the frequency, in very low frequency the taller buildings start move, start moving, right? We can see the building is moving very fastly. So this is because the frequency of lot larger building or a taller building is low as compared to the shorter ones. So the building will start uh, the building, taller building will start moving in very low frequency. So in low frequency earthquake, the taller building affected. So as we increase the frequency here, the large building that was moving so fast, it will move slowly slow down. And slowly, we can see that the shorter building will move on. Move right? This is because the short buildings and shorter buildings are very large. So when the earthquake comes large frequency, it affects shorter buildings. So uh, this is a very uh, simple explanation behind the frequency. Now let's move on to, the, uh, to other, uh, other experiment which protecting the building from earthquake right so in this building uh, in this uh, experiment we can see the buildings which are directly connected to the ground uh, affect get uh, get easily affected by earthquake if we if we uh, add a flexible thing on the base of a building like between the ground and the building we add a flexible layer uh, it could be anything plastic or anything so uh, in this video, we can see the building is not getting affected easily, not, not even moving, right? So, on ground or building ke beech mein, agar hum koi flexible material dal dein, to uski wajah se hum bahut zada reduce kar sakte hain effect of uh, earthquake. Uh, yehi cheez, uh, ye jo uh, flexible uh, ye experiment hai, isme India mein first building bhuj mein bani gayi hai, jisme same ye jo process hai, wo use hua hai. So, if we have to protect the earthquake, we can use this thing as per the building. We can use this building and this type of area as per the flexible material. Ko hum dal ke. Hello everyone, I am Yeshwarjan Singh of class 11 science, Kendri Vidyalaya No. 3, Gandhi Nagarkand. And now, I am going to explain you the demonstration shown to us during our trip to IIT Gandhi Nagar. So basically, the experiment was a demonstration of Charles law, which states that at constant pressure, the volume occupied by a fixed amount of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. In simple words, if we keep the pressure unchanged, then if we increase the temperature, the volume also increases and if we decrease the temperature, the volume also reduces. As we can see in the demonstration, at constant pressure, when we take an inflated balloon and put it inside liquid nitrogen, the temperature of the gas inside the balloon decreases, which results in the decrease in the volume also, thus we see the balloon shrinks. A very classic real life example of this demonstration is the hot air balloon. When the fuel is heated, it expands the gas around it, so the gas becomes less dense 
and which results in the lifting of the bell. Hello everyone, I am Sharap Chauhan. This is my friend Anubhuti. We are from class 11 science. Today we are going to explain dry ice cube experiment that was done by IIT Gandhinagar student. So first of all, what are the properties of dry ice? Dry ice is a solid form of carbon dioxide CO2. It directly sublimates solid to gas. Its temperature is minus 109 degree. It cannot be touched directly by hand. You should take precaution to touch it. Now Anubhuti will be tell you the physical phenomena produced by dry ice. When we keep some dry ice in a vessel and pour water into it, it sublimates and exits CO2 gas, which looks very beautiful. To make it more attractive, we add little drop of detergent into it. The gas will change into foam. It bursts when we touch it with our hand. The properties of dry ice is used in theaters, nightclubs, and different parties, etc. Thank you. must have seen how enthusiastic our students were. Seeing the enthusiasm of their classmates, more and more students came forward to me to seek the guidance and after motivation, created and demonstrated activities of use of science in day-to-day -day life, which I will continue in my next part of the episode of Science Day.